Scientists have discovered the true ferocity of a huge volcanic eruption off the coast of Tonga in January. Australia and New Zealand sent out surveillance flights to Tonga today in the wake of an enormous undersea volcano eruption on Saturday. Tonight, jaw-dropping images of an extraordinarily powerful and now deadly volcano erupting in the Pacific Ocean. Even a year later, scientists continue to be astounded by the Hunga Tonga explosion's power and puzzle over how to keep track of hundreds of such underwater volcanoes. A year ago, Larry Paxton saw what he shouldn't have seen. He was peering toward the edge of space. Paxton, a physicist at Johns Hopkins University, looks down on the area of space just above the atmosphere using satellite-based sensors. They watch for things like unusual space weather in light spectrums that we can't see, like the far ultraviolet. On a scan, though, his team noticed an oddity in late January. A portion of the map had turned dark. A dull spot around the size of Montana was created as a result of some kind of molecule absorbing the far UV light rays. The Hunga Tonga volcano, which had just erupted in the South Pacific, was soon identified as the cause. The molecules, which Paxton team ultimately calculated to be enough water to fill 100 Olympic swimming pools, had been propelled faster than the speed of sound by an explosion unheard of before on Earth. The amount of water being pumped at that height is enormous, according to Paxton, whose research was just presented at the American Geophysical Union. That is a remarkable thing! One year later, scientists researching almost all aspects of the Earth from the mantle to the oceans to the ionosphere, had experienced moments similar to Paxton's when they were astounded by some extraordinary findings brought on by the Hunga eruption. Scientists have recently witnessed the largest concentration of lightning ever seen and new vibrational waves that propagated around the globe and caused tsunamis in distant ocean basins. According to Olger Wömel, a scientist at the National Center for Atmospheric Research, the freshly discovered water molecules represented the very top of a massive plume that filled the high atmosphere with enough water to retain heat underneath, potentially warming the Earth somewhat for the upcoming years. Obviously weird, the explosion on January 15, 2022. But now, academics want to know how singular was it exactly? The hundreds of underwater volcanoes that are scattered around the world's oceans are affected by the answer. The Hunga eruption exposes a new sort of volcano and new types of underwater dangers, says Shane Cronin, a volcanologist at the University of Auckland. Yet, only a small number of underwater volcanoes have been the subject of in-depth study. They include the long-active Kick'em Jenny near the Caribbean country of Grenada and the Axial Seamount, which is a few hundred miles off the coast of Oregon and has been studied since the 1970s. Both are equipped with sensors that keep an eye out for rumbles and are frequently visited by research cruises. Yet, many more are discovered in distant Pacific arcs, far from major cities or ports where research vessels anchor. Its closest neighbors are tiny island states like Tonga, which lacks seismic monitoring infrastructure and dedicated volcanic monitoring programs. It is partly a result of geographical issues. For instance, Tonga's chain of islands make it difficult to triangulate the origins of seismic waves. Staffing and funding are sometimes in short supply in nations where the population is comparable to that of a sizable U.S. town. According to Jake Lowenstern, director of the USGS Volcano Disaster Assistance Program, international options, such as the U.S. Geological Survey's Seismic Monitoring Network, provide global coverage for unusual geologic activity. However, the stations are typically too few and far between to pick up the softer rumbles for telling an impending undersea eruption. Most of the eruptions cannot match Hunga Tonga's level of explosiveness, but the incident made people aware of these volcanoes' potential for activity, according to Sharon Walker, an oceanographer at the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory. Even if such incidents are rare, she asserts that they shouldn't occur under her watch it's obvious that the explosive mixture used in Hunga was peculiar and might not be simple to recreate. The eruption had been going along as planned for almost a month, 
It was manageable and fairly powerful, with gas and ash. Then, things started to go wrong. According to Cronin, that appears to be the outcome of at least two variables. One was the mixing of magma sources with marginally various chemical compositions underneath. As these things interacted, gases were created, increasing the magma's volume inside the boundaries of the rock. The rocks above started to split under the intense strain, letting the chilly ocean through. If you like, the extra spice was added by the seawater, according to Cronin. Following a gigantic explosion, two of them, trillions of tons of material were blown out through the caldera's top, some of it presumably all the way to space. These explosions both resulted in massive tsunamis. The largest wave, though, arrived later and may have been brought on by water entering the kilometer-deep hole that had abruptly been carved out of the bottom, according to Cronin. He remarks, that's something totally fresh for us, a new kind of hazard to think about elsewhere. Before, experts believed that this type of volcano could only produce a large tsunami if a caldera side fell. He claims that underwater volcanoes are more diversified than previously believed and can exhibit more intense activity in some circumstances. The difficulties of investigating undersea volcanoes have also been brought to light by the process of piecing the eruption together. A big, fully staffed research vessel with multi-beam sonar that scans the bottom for changes and a battery of water sample tools that look for chemical indicators of continuing activity are common components of a mapping expedition. Yet, traveling by boat over an active caldera is dangerous, not so much because a volcano could erupt, but because the rising gas bubbles could capsize the vessel. Researchers in Tonga used a smaller ship and an autonomous vessel to tackle the issue. Even Tonga, which has been visited four times in the past year as a result of an increase in research funding to organizations investigating the eruption, is unlikely to obtain another significant crew trip in the coming years, according to Cronin. It was just so expensive. To thoroughly study every volcano, even only those along the Tongan Arc, would probably take decades. Walker laments the loss of these missions, which are one of the few opportunities for scientists to get up and personal with volcanoes and observe them in action. A better scenario would see increased financing for those missions, as well as expenditures for developing new technologies, such as autonomous ships, which can be challenging to control in the dangerous open seas. Without them, researchers are forced to observe from afar. While trying to watch underwater events is challenging but not impossible, pumice rafts, which are sheets of buoyant volcanic rock that bob on the water's surface, can be seen with satellite technology, as can algae blooms, which are nourished by the minerals released by volcanoes. Meanwhile, a network of sensors around Tonga is being set up by the USGS and its Australian counterparts in order to better identify volcanic activity. This network will combine seismic stations with sound sensors and webcams that monitor for active eruptions. It will be difficult to maintain its operational, according to Lowenstern. It would need to keep the systems connected to data and power sources and make sure Tonga has employees to man the facilities. He continues, listing Tonga as only one of many Pacific Island countries in need of assistance. But it's the beginning. Experts explain why the Tonga eruption was so big. The breathtaking satellite photographs of an undersea volcano erupting in the Pacific and producing a massive mushroom cloud astounded viewers all around the world. Many people were curious about why the explosion was so large, how the ensuing wave spread out, and what would happen next. Professor of Volcanology Shane Cronin from the University of Auckland and tsunami specialist Emily Lane from the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research from New Zealand contribute to the explanation. Oh, why so big? Gases were trapped within the highly pressurized magma inside the volcano. It's likely that a crack in the rock caused a sudden reduction in pressure, which allowed the gas to expand and rip the magma apart. According to Cronin, the crater is located around 200 meters below the sea surface, making it the ideal depth for a large explosion in which seawater seeps into the volcano and rapidly converts into steam, accelerating the explosion's rapid expansion and energy. If the water had been any deeper, the added pressure would have helped control the eruption. No global cooling. 
As sulfur dioxide is blasted into the stratosphere, large volcanic eruptions can occasionally result in a brief cooling of the entire planet. But in the case of the Tonga eruption, Alan Robach, a professor at Rutgers University, found that preliminary satellite measurements showed the amount of sulfur dioxide released would only have a small impact, possibly cooling the planet's average temperature by 0.01 degrees Celsius. Far-flung tsunami Several experts were taken aback by the fact that a single eruption might create a tsunami to sweep the whole Pacific Ocean, measuring around one meter, which destroyed boats in New Zealand and resulted in an oil spill and two drownings in Peru. According to Lane, earthquakes that are widespread rather than coming from a single volcano, which is effectively a tiny dot in the ocean, are typically what cause ocean-wide tsunamis. According to her, other elements, such as the volcano's underwater slope collapsing and displacing water, may have been at play. One intriguing possibility, according to her, is that the sonic boom from the volcano that went twice around the globe may have given the tsunami waves additional strength. What's next? Cronin sees two possible outcomes for the volcano. The first is that it has already reached its limit and will cease activity for the next 10 to 20 years as magma gradually re-emerges. A second possibility is that fresh magma soon replaces the exploding material, in which case eruptions can continue. Yet according to him, the large explosion on Saturday left breaches and rifts that will let more gas escape and, for the time being at least, reduce the size of future eruptions. Cronin and Lane concur that increased monitoring of this volcano and others in Tonga is necessary to improve future event prediction. What are your thoughts on the video? Please let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel before leaving. Thanks for watching.